In today's video, we're going to do a guide on network monitoring. Doesn't sound like the most exciting topic. However, if you have your own home lab or you're doing any self-hosting, then knowing what's on your network and the status of everything is very, very important. So we'll go ahead and walk through how to set this up. It's a version of what used to be called Pi.alert. It's called NetAlert X, and it gives you great notifications whether you want emails, web hooks, all kinds of notification options. So if you want to get a message in Slack that something's uh, gone down on your network or even something's attached to your network that you aren't, aren't aware of, you can get those. You can get those uh, quickly. Know what's going on with your uh, network at all times. So let's go ahead and jump into the guide now and see what we learn. Okay, we're going to start this guide in Portainer. I typically like to use Portainer because it's easier for folks who might be new to Docker and Docker Compose than using the command line interface. Sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming and not knowing all the switches and things. So Portainer makes it easy to be able to click through and be able to deploy new containers pretty easily. So let's start off by going to uh, our local uh, environment. We're going to click on stacks. I've already got frigate running on this one from another demo. So we're going to go ahead and add a new stack and we're going to paste in our Docker compose file here. So you can find this Docker compose file out on my GitHub site. The link will be down in the, uh, the description below. So feel free to browse through there, copy this and, uh, and bring it over. And then I'll show you the couple of things that we're going to have to change here for, for your instance. So we're going to give it a name. My uh, name is going to be NetAlertX because I'm not very creative. So we're just going to call it that. And then we need to go in and change uh, a couple things like I mentioned. First thing is gonna be changing the IP address. So this IP address needs to match whatever machine that you're on. In my case, it's 10.0.0.10. I've already got that in there, so it's ready to go. You can change it to whatever makes sense for your machine. And then the other thing you wanna change is down here, uh, America, Chicago. You wanna make sure that that's your time zone. So go ahead and put that in there, whatever uh, time zone you have. Make sure it matches for you so that you can see when things are, are joining or leaving your network. That's it. That's all you need to change. The other thing that you're going to do is actually make sure, I forgot one thing, make sure that uh, this is uh, commented out. You don't want to have this line in here when you do uh, production because every time you start up, it's going to wipe out all the database and configurations that you have. So go ahead and make sure that that's um, set to uh, false or just commented out. And then we're ready to go ahead and start it up. So we'll click deploy the stack and then we'll log in. Okay, so everything's up and running. We can see that the container is healthy. So let's go ahead and log in. To do that, go ahead and put in the IP address of the machine that you're on as well as the port number and hit return and it'll take you right there. The first thing you're gonna see is probably one, maybe two items in there. The first one is likely gonna be the router that you're, uh, you're connected to. The second one may or may not be the machine you're on. So those are the only two things you might see. So let's go ahead and start scanning the network. In order to do that, we need to figure out what your um, ethernet port is gonna be. So when we go out here to the interface names, you see a whole bunch of them here. They're for the different Docker containers that I have running on this machine. The one you care about though in, in this is the one that shares the IP address of the machine that you're on. In my case, it's that 10.0.0.10. We'll go find that, uh, the name of that, mine is, the, in this case is ETH0. So let's go to our settings. And then down here in the core section, we're going to add that in here to, uh, to tell it where to start looking, what subnet. So we're going to add 10.0.0.0, and then we're going to do a slash 24, and that's the CIDR notation so that it checks everything in the subnet range. So everything in here from 1 to 255, it's going to look through. Uh, the thing that we want to add here is that the port, so it's ETH0. For mine, yours may be different, so make sure you, you account for that. Hit add. You can leave the first one there. You could remove it, really, whatever you want to do, and then hit save. And what it's going to do is it's going to go out there and start scanning for your, your items on your network. So you see it there. It kicked in. Uh, the first time, it does one quick scan. So you may want to wait. If we go over here and look at devices, we only see, again, that the router that we had and the device that we're on right now. So it hasn't found everything. Give it about five minutes or so because that's how often the, the, the default timing is for the run, job runs. And then after that, you should see everything populate. So we'll come back here in just a minute. 
All right, the scan's all done. It found 46 new devices when it finished the scan. As you can see, it had the uh, the couple that we had at the first part, and then five minutes later when it did its next scan, it found all the others. So this is great. We now see everything that's on our network. However, we wanna be notified if something new joins or something drops. So let's go ahead and set up some uh, alerts for that. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and go over to settings again. And then we're gonna go way down to the bottom to our publishers. So at the very bottom, the last one that you have is publishers. You've got all kinds of options down here. Uh, the one we're gonna look at is, is just email publisher, SMTP. I use a, a software called Bre Brevo, 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 something like that. I don't know, it used to be called Send in Blue. But what I can do is I can send uh, messages through that using their SMTP server. You can also do it with uh, Gmail if you want. Uh, come in here, you'll say um, on notification is what you're gonna check to. And then you're gonna fill out all the details for your server. So if you're using Gmail, they have a little guide over here that you, that you can use. If you're using Brevo or some other uh, SMTP server, fill out the details there. We won't go through all that right now. Uh, whatever it is for your system, you can set that up. Hit save, and then what it'll do is it'll tell you any time something joins or leaves the network. If you'd rather not use email and you want to use something like a webhook, you can set those up down here as well. You can tell it to uh, to enable it, set up whatever your webhook is going to be. Maybe you want it to send you a message in Slack, something like that. So anytime something joins or, or leaves the network, you'll be able to know it with Slack. So then uh, you set up those messages there, hit save as well, the same way you would do with the email, and then you've got it all good to go. The other thing we're gonna look at is how to set this up so you can map out your entire network. If you go over here to network, you'll see that you have internet, which is your first item. One of the neat things about network overview is you can set up a map of your entire network. You can go in and assign everything, connect everything up so you can show different subnets, you can show different devices, and then you can easily see what's online or offline. And that way you can map out everything and make sure that uh, everything is aligned to what you want it to look like. So that takes you through the install and setup of NetAlert X. It used to be PyAlert, but they've added a lot more things to it. They've uh, done some enhancements, done some stability to it. So it's a lot nicer now. Um, I love this, I use it all the time for my own setup. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down there in the, in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you'll be alerted of all the new videos. And I'll see you in the next video.